NASCAR takes a common sense approach to the DVP controversy. Plus, will the Haas F1 deal with Toyota affect their NASCAR program? Welcome back to Break Hard, I'm Matt. Great news, NASCAR has taken a very common sense approach to the damage vehicle policy controversy that has been surrounding both Talladega and Kansas the week before that. So a little bit of backstory in case you're not familiar. On lap one of the race at Kansas, coming off of turn two, Josh Berry got tagged and spun out. He had all four tires go flat and NASCAR hooked him up and he was done for the day. After only doing half a lap, uh, he was done for the day because he couldn't drive his car back to pit lane to get new tires put on it. Damage was very, very, minimal at that. And it was a bad look. And NASCAR, Brad Moran, all admitted on Sirius XM NASCAR, yeah, that was a bad look. That's something we're definitely going to take a look at. And going into Talladega last weekend, it was a major topic of conversation. Then, of course, we had that big one in the closing laps of the race. You have 28 wrecked race cars. And we have guys like Chase Briscoe literally putting their hand over the window net latch to make sure that the safety workers cannot put his window net down. He wants a tow back to pit lane. Here's the thing, though. He couldn't drive himself back to pit lane, so he should have gotten the Josh Berry treatment, along with Chase Elliott, Harrison Burton, and a couple of others. Instead, NASCAR hooks him up and takes them back to pit lane, allows teams to repair the damage, replace the tires, and enter them back out into the race, which I'm sure had Rodney Childers absolutely furious and befuddled all at the same time. Even Josh Berry, when he got out of the infield care center, was like, there's a whole lot of effing wreck race cars over there that better not be able to get back into the race. And he was right, except... That's not what NASCAR did. Instead, they let those cars get back in, and then controversy erupted. You have uh, Elton Sawyer after the race coming out and being like, hey, we, this week we decided to err on the side of the competitor. That's great. I'm a big fan of that, but maybe we should communicate that instead of people being like, completely lost on what is happening out here. Well, on Thursday, NASCAR met with crew chiefs and explained what their DVP policy Damage vehicle policy will be going forward. You can't call it a DVP policy. That is like saying RIP in peace. Yeah, we got it. It's redundant. Going forward, starting this weekend at the Roval, they will carry over the same set of rules that they had at Talladega. So if your car has one or more tires flat um, and damage, it can be towed back to pit lane and you can make repairs to that damage and put new tires on it within that seven minute clock uh, that you have for the DVP clock. If your car has just sustained um, a lot of damage to where you can't drive it back and you're done for the day, well, listen, your NASCAR will just deem that you're done and you're out of the race. That's a common sense approach um, to that. If you have all four tires up, but you cannot drive back to pit lane, you're done for the day. Uh, think of Ryan Blaney at Watkins Glen. Now, I know there's going to be people in the comments that are like, but Ryan Blaney should have been given that same treatment. They should have towed him back to pit lane. Here's the problem. Just because you can't see the damage doesn't mean that there's not damage there. His steering was broken. That's not something they're going to be able to fix on pit lane uh, for him. His day was done. I know it's not, you know, it, it's a controversial thing to say. That's not what some people want to hear. I like this approach a lot. So if you have a tire flat, you can't drive it back to pit lane. If you have all four tires flat, you can't drive back to pit lane. You get to get you know, a tow back and you can repair it. Um, the only thing I can get concerned about, and I kind of said this before in another video, is I don't want to see this like extend caution periods. Caution periods are already pretty long, especially when you work in stage cautions and everything like that. Um, but hopefully it can have a more streamlined approach. And hopefully we're not putting good race cars out of the race, uh, like how Brad Moran said, we don't want to do that, which is good. We shouldn't be doing that because Josh Berry should not have been out of the race. Um, I would argue that some of those cars maybe on last Sunday at Talladega that got towed back had a little bit of damage to them. Uh, that would be the only thing where like, you know, if a car is completely wrecked and a driver knows when a car is completely trashed, right? So I don't think that's going to be a controversy um, at all, but happy that they made this decision. On to another topic. On Thursday night, the Haas Formula One team announced a technical partnership with Toyota. Um, it doesn't mean that they're going to become a Toyota team. It doesn't mean they're going to have Toyota engines. In fact, they're still going to be basically using all the Ferrari parts with some help from Toyota and Ferrari engines, but no help from Toyota on the engine side of things. But people are wondering, does that affect Gene Haas's efforts in NASCAR? Do, will we see, you know, the Haas factory team in 2025 make a switch over to Toyota maybe in 2026? And no, it has no effect on it as much as I think 
you know, some people maybe want to see them become a Toyota team in NASCAR. It just does not appear that that's going to happen. Just because you have two, um, you know, have two entries in different series doesn't mean they have to be the same manufacturer. In fact, I think most owners would, you know, prefer that to not be the same manufacturer. Yes, it makes it easier for, you know, them to put one of their drivers into one of those other series and have them compete there. Absolutely. But you need to diversify, especially if you're running factory programs. It's why we see uh, like Team Penske, they run Fords in NASCAR, they run Chevy's in IndyCar, they run the Porsche 963 program in WEC, as well as IMSA, three factory programs. Um, and if one loses its budget, the chances are the other one's not going to lose its budget. So they at least have that diversified portfolio uh, for them. We've seen it happen with Ganassi where they ran a Ford IMSA program. They ran Chevy's in NASCAR and they ran Honda's and IndyCar or yeah. So running different programs, isn't something that, you know, is really out of the question for them to have a Toyota partnership on the F1 side and Ford on the other side makes a lot of sense. And from a Haas standpoint, like they've already got a lot of money invested in Ford. They have an RFK Alliance coming up next year in the Xfinity series. They basically provide a lot of the, you know, efforts for the Ford teams down there, not only their two car program, but also the Siegs as well as AM racing next year. So that's a pretty good little business that they have going on for them on the Xfinity side of things. So yeah. And plus they have a lot of money invested in the Ford program over there. And if you listen to Gunther Steiner, Gene Haas is a cheapskate in some senses, uh, in Gunther's opinion there, because according to Gunther, at one point he wanted Gene to, or Gene wanted him to take baked beans off of a flight, uh, because they weren't eaten, take them back to the factory to eat them later, which is definitely some penny pinching in all honesty. So I don't think they're going to be writing a big check to Joe Gibbs Racing to become more competitive. I, essentially, what Gene Haas wants to use racing as is just a marketing platform for his for his uh, Haas automation company. So, yeah, I mean, they're not going to be making any changes over to Toyota any time uh, soon. I think there's other programs out there that could make that switch before, uh, the Haas factory team would. So let me know in the comments, what you think about NASCAR's, you know, logical approach to the damage vehicle policy going forward. Plus, um, do you ever see Haas switching over to Toyota? Personally, I don't, but I'd love to hear what everybody else has to say. Like, and subscribe to the channel. Follow me on TikTok at break hard, Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook at break hard blog.